Okay, Bible Story, Volume 4. Uh, my book has David and Goliath on it. We're almost through with this book. If you've been following it, it's uh, getting pretty good. But it gives you a lot of morals. Uh, this uh, illustration is by Craig... Craig Collins, yeah. Says Craig Collins. His work is a little comic book too. And I'm gonna go ahead and show it to you. That's the illustration, and it's on a different page. But that's the illustration at the beginning of the story. Because I wanted to get it through it. So we're at part four. Story 6, Queen in Disguise. Shortly after this great sorrow came to Jer 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 Jeroboam, his son, Abijah, fell sick, and nobody could do anything for him. At last, Jeroboam remembered the pro prophet Ajah, Ahijah, who years before had told him that he would someday be king over the twelve over the ten tribes of Israel. He he could make the boy well if he would, but would he? Not if he knew who the boy really was. That fact must have kept him from from uh, that fact must be kept from him at all costs. So Jeroboam told his wife to disguise herself and go to Shiloh, where Ahijah was living. There, take ten loaves and cracknels and a cruise of honey, honey, and go to him. He shall tell thee. What shall become of this child? But this time Ahiah, Ahijah was old and blind, so that there was no need for the queen to disguise herself. But she did just the same, thinking she could deceive the prophet of the Lord. Prophet of the, yeah, deceive the prophet of the Lord. How mistaken she was, and he knew her at once. To her great astonishment, as Ahijah heard the sound of her feet as she came into the door, he said to her, Come in, thou wife of Jeroboam. Too startled to speak, the queen never said a word. All she could do is listen to the words of doom the aged prophet spoke to her. Go tell Jeroboam, Ahiah, Ahiah said to her, And thus saith the Lord of Israel, For so much as I exalt thee from among the people, and made thee prince over my people in Israel, I rent the kingdom away from the house of David, and give and gave it to thee yet thou hast not been as my servant David and of course these are the convent of verses for thou hast gone and made the other gods and molten images to provoke me to anger and has cast me behind thy back therefore behold I will bring evil upon the house of Jeroboam, him that die, um, him that dieth of, dieth, yeah, him that dieth of Jeroboam in the city shall be eat, shall the dogs eat, and he that dieth in the field shall the fowls of the air eat, for the Lord hath spoken it. As for Jeroboam's child, there is no hope. 
we would he would die but because God saw some good thing in him he only he only of all Jeroboam's children should be buried in a grave for the ten tribes of ten tribes which Jeroboam had led to sin Aniah Ahiah had only equal sad had an equal sad message. The Lord, he said, shall root up Israel out of this good land which he gave to their fathers, and shall scatter them beyond the river you the river Euphrates the brethren, because they have have made their groves provoke the Lord to anger. Then Elijah, Elijah Ahiah was finished speaking the queen went sadly on her way, wondering how she would tell her husband what he had said to her. When she arrived home at the threshold, threshold of the door, her child died. She knew knew when all that when all the other dreadful things Aniah had told her would come to pass. You would think that all this would have been enough to turn Jeroboam from his evil way, but it was not. Like Pharaoh of old, he, he hardened his heart again and plunged one and plunged from one sin into another until there was no hope for him or for his kingdom. And then it has a picture of the queen standing at the door and then the almond in the back of the dark men of the children. Okay, so that is the end of Part 4, Story 6, and we're breaking, and we're going to start on the next one in just a second. So, give me a minute.